Hello and welcome to the 2013 Hillsdale College Football Preview. My name is Jenna Hilgenbrink and I'm joined today by head coach Keith Otterby. Coach, Hi, Jenna. welcome. All right, let's get started. So what kind of things is the coaching staff doing in the off season to help prepare for this new season? Well, first thing we do is shift gears from the season to recruiting, which is obviously if you have better players, uh, you're gonna have a better football team. So we go immediately from the season into the recruiting, which lasts until the first week of February, um, getting you know the, the next freshman class together. Uh, in the meantime, our players are, are getting bigger, stronger, faster in the weight room, uh, running program. So they're working out uh, four days a week, uh, maximum of eight hours in the off season that they're working. Uh, then once we're done with the recruiting part of it, we go back and kind of do a self analysis um, of our football, offense, defense, special teams to see schematically if we like what we're doing. Um, many times we'll go out and visit with other staffs. Uh, we come back then in the spring, um, do spring practice and kind of use and tweak the new ideas that we may have, have wanted to try. Make personnel changes, which is a really big thing. Um, early on in my career here working for Coach Lowry, um, the most important thing you do is put the players in the right positions. And, and so as we put our players in the right positions to make us the best football team we could, springtime sometimes takes some position moves. So we utilize that. And then, you know, our players, we're a little unique in college football today because our players go home in the summer. Um, I think they need to, to have a break from the, the rigors of the academics here, let alone, you know, thrown on top of it, uh, college football at a very high level. So our players go home and, and work out and get ready. And, and so they'll show up and, and be in shape and ready to go. And, and there's, a, there's a new excitement, enthusiasm towards every new season. So uh, we're getting very excited about, uh, about the start. All right, well, let's talk about some of the players. You got three linebackers coming back. You got Brett Pashy, Devin Moynihan, Stephen Embry. What does it do for the team to have three starters come back in those big positions? Well, I think number one is it's their leadership, both on and off the field. Um, you know, those veterans that have played a lot of football for you, um, they influence your football team by the way they go about their business in the weight room. They go about their business uh, on the football field and practice during games. You know, but it even carries, especially at a school like this, to how they carry themselves around campus and, and how they interact with, with the other people on campus and the community. And, and all those guys are very active and involved uh, in giving back to the community. So their leadership, uh, their leadership by example, uh, none of them are really what you would call rah-rah guys, but uh, um, just their maturity, their leadership, uh, their work ethic, in everything that they do, um, they're kind of the epitome of, of what we want our football players to be. Okay, so on offense, it's a bit of a different story. You got to fill these main positions up the middle. You got your center, quarterback, running back. You got to replace all those positions. Are you ready for that? Is, or is it going to be a challenge for the team? Well, you know, it's a challenge anytime you lose a good football player. You know, you can go back over the history of just, you know, the last several years here when. Mark Nicolay graduates. Well, then Troy Weatherhead was pretty good. Or when Vinny Panisi graduated, well, Joel Glendening was pretty good. So, you know, you're always anticipating uh, having to replace guys in college football, unlike the pros where, you know, they can sign long-term contracts. We've got to get ready to replace guys. So we're used to having to replace individuals. Um, it's, it's a unique situation because those key three positions are there. Uh, on the offense, the center, the quarterback, and the tailback, um, especially when you graduate the all-time leading ball carrier in, in your history of your football team that's been around for 121 years. So um, Joe was pretty good, and those are big shoes to fill. Um, but basically, we take the same approach, and that's next man up. Okay, the next guy has worked his tail off to be ready to have that opportunity and, and be there. So... Um, Justice Carmi at center, uh, Sam Landry at tailback, uh, Isaac Spence and, and Bennett Lewis uh, at tailback. Um, all of those guys need to be ready and, and the level that they play at, I think will have a big impact on how our football team does 
but you don't go about replacing those individuals any differently uh, from one year to the next than any other position. All right, well, let's talk about the conference for a minute. The GLEAG is known to be one of the toughest conference in Division II. In your opinion, what makes it so tough? Uh, great parity. Top to bottom, you got to show up on Saturday afternoon ready to play. Uh, I think there's great coaching, and so you better be sound in all phases, offense, defense, special teams, because you're going to be exposed if there's any kind of weakness. Um, and then I think it's got to it's got to league the attitude around the conference is we're not waiting for anybody. So mm -hmm. you know when you, when you've got somebody like Grand Valley that that makes great investments in their program or uh, Ashland with their great new facilities or Wayne State with the the uh, progress that their football team has made over over the time that Coach Winters has been there, Saginaw Valley, and the leadership that they're getting from Coach Collins, Ohio Dominican. I mean, you go on and on about yeah. top to bottom. They're all very, very good. They're all sound football teams with good players, and and I think just not waiting for anybody, but but staying on the cutting edge, schematically, facilities wise, and, and all phases of the program. Uh, make it challenging week in and week out that you got to show up on Saturday and play really good football to win in this league. So about those games, three of the first five games will be away, and then four of the last six games will be home. What does it take to have a really strong start to the season with such an away heavy beginning? Well, you know, that really isn't a factor for us. Um, we're going to approach each game one game at a time. I mean, it's, it's get that corny coaching cliche, but really that's really what it is. Um, we're going to take all of our energy that we can, beginning with game week against Cal PA, and we're going to put emotionally, mentally, physically, and emotionally, do everything we possibly can from the beginning of that preparation week through the end of the game, and then we're going to either win or lose, and mm -hmm. then we're going to move on and, and put all of our emotions and energy into the next game. So each of those games, whether they're going to be home or away, really doesn't make a difference from our preparation standpoint, but again, it's just like that the deal we have with our offense. Um, you don't change your approach, but certainly the ability to come out and play well early uh, is going to be key to the overall success of our football team and to see that when we get to the November part, which is really, you know, the meat and potatoes of the thing, when you go Grand Valley, Michigan Tech, and then Northwood, to see if we're, we've got an opportunity to be a factor uh, in a conference championship. All right, well, thank you, Coach, and thank you for watching the 2013 Hillsdale College Football Preview.